Hi everyone, welcome to another fun and exciting summary tutorial. Um, I have been working on something so cute is these little flowers. Now, my husband bought me these a couple of months ago and I have tried so many times to make projects with these and I have been epically failing. So, yesterday I decided to do something different with them and I am going to show you how to make these really cute components. So, I was hoping to make a bracelet but I, I didn't want to do it in all different colors like this. I just did this so I can see what I was doing. This is actually just my, um, let me bring this up closer. This is just my sample piece. See the little flowers? And it's got all kinds of colors in here. It's actually really cute. But I wanted to make something solid bottoms. So all of these have a solid bottom and they have the flowers on top. And I am going to call these flowers in a basket. Now these flowers you can get, these are those lucite flowers. They're the same as the little bells that you can get. You can get almost anything in a lucite bead. And we got these off of eBay. And they come in a package of 50. There's 50 in this package. So I got a whole bunch of colors. Pink, blue, orange, <coughs> green, and some yellow and some clear. And just ignore that noise in the background. <coughs> so anyways, this is, um, I'm going to give you the link for the eBay site where you can get these, these flowers. These are 15 millimeter. They're really cheap. Two something for a bag of 50 of them. You can't go wrong for that. So we bought a whole bunch of colors. We also bought the, a clear bigger one. And this is going to be my um, closure. Yes, I'm sick, and you probably can hear that in my voice. And I blame that on my husband because he came from California and he brought this cold with him. It's all his fault why I'm sick. So here's this one here is like a big honker in 40 millimeters, I think. This is huge. So you can see the difference in the size. These are 15. But if you go to this website that I link in the bottom of this video, that website shows you can buy all kinds of shapes, sizes, um, different kinds. You can even buy the ones where the hole goes directly right through the middle of these instead of at the bottom like a button. But I wanted these buttons because I wanted to make something with them. When I seen them, I just fell in love with them. So this is a pink, a green, an orange, and a blue. And then I'm going to show you how to make these components. You can actually make earrings. You can make you can do anything with these. Then I'm going to show you how to put them together like this so they kind of bump up a little bit up here. See how they bump up? So if they're sitting on your wrist as a, as a, a bracelet, they're, it's really cute. I, I don't really care for all these tons of colors, but I did the different colors so I could see what I was doing so I can keep making. <coughs> Excuse me. Let's keep, keep making them. So I'm using um, opal beads, and this is 8mm um, eight, eight opal beads, and this pink is what I'm using for the base of these beads, and I'm also using an 11 0 in these, um, I believe it's called Baby Pink Opal Gilt Lined. So I'm using these, and I'm going to use the purple to join them here, or I might use the green this color green here. I'm still not sure what, what I'm going to do, but <laughs> as we go along I'll decide then. I think maybe the green might look nice kind of for this the fact that it's like a garden and join it with the dark green. We'll see when we get there. So if you wanted to make this you need to get some of these little flowers, these 15 millimeters, or you could use whatever you want. But these are 15 millimeters. And I am going to show you how to make them with these flowers. So if you do order some off of eBay, um, even, and the shipping to boot is free 
on that lady's website. So you can't go wrong. Even people that don't have a lot of money can afford to buy a package of, of these. She does sell them um, in... Um, like they, they're almost like they're variegated and there's a package of 50 and they're all mixed colors so if you don't want to buy individual packages like this you can buy the whole package for two dollars and 49 cents of 50 different colors so it's up to you so you're going to need like I said you're going to need some 8 O's and you're going to need some 11 O's um, you will need um, some kind of a button for uh, to, to do up your bracelet and that's about oh and you need fire line six pound is what I'm using here and a size 10 beading needle is what I'm using and that's it so let's get started since I have everything ready here because I was working on um, making these components um, oh I'm so sick and today is the last day for the contest and oh my god has there been a lot of entries I'm so overwhelmed <coughs> at how many entries there are it's going to be really hard to choose but there's four of us choosing and the last three that we pick have to be a unanimous vote so anyway get your needle and I'm, I, I just string on something that I'm comfortable in the length to work with because I make like two components with the amount of thread that, um, that I put on my needle. So, to get started, one sec, I need to take a quick drink because my mouth and throat is so dry and if I talk, I might crack my voice. And I might sound really girly. Oh wait, I am a girl. Goodness. All right. So, for starters, let me get this camera up perfectly uh, up good here, up close and personal. Now, let's pick up two, three, eight, four, five, six, seven, eight. You want to pick up eight, eight dots on your uh, needle. Bring those down. Leave yourself enough tail to tie a knot with. You don't need to have this big, huge, long tail. Okay? So I'm just going to wrap that around my hand, wrap it around my fingers like so, and I am going to run my needle back through from the bottom. So this would have been my first bead I put on and the last bead. So I'm going to make a circle and go through all these beads like so. Okay? and pull and turn that into a circle. It's not quite a circle yet so what you're going to do is take your needle and go through the first two beads on here on this side dog hair everywhere, bird feathers everywhere like so and pull and you got yourself this little cute circle I hope you can see that because my lighting there we go. Let's get some shade off of my hands so I'm not shading everything. All right. And we'll bring this up a tad bit more. All right. Now what you're going to do is pick up one 11 on your needle. And you're coming out here. Just going to go through two 8 O's like so and pull okay pick up an 11 0 go through two 8 0's like so oops alright let's try this again and go through two See? and pull pick up an 11 0 go through two 8 0's and that tail is always going to be a havoc in this component because you're not going to tie it off until you've completely finished it so you have to suck it up and keep that tail 
with you. So you're going to exit now into um, your last two beads and you're going to step up into the first 11 that you put on here. Okay? Move my fat finger so you can see. Alright. Now we have this cute circle kind of having little points where we put the 11 O's in between the twos. Eight O's. Now, exiting out of this 11 O, you're going to pick up two 11 O's, one 8 O, and two 11 O's. This is actually a really fun component. I, I thought, it, I, I enjoy making them, and I thought they were really cute to be called flowers in a basket. Because that's what they look like. Now, you have me lost here. Okay, two, two 11 O's, one 8 O, two 11 O's. And you're just going to skip these two 8's and go into the next 11 O that you put on in the previous round. And pull. Pick up two 11 O's, one 8 O, and two 11 O's. And skip the two 8's and go into the 11. Okay. So, and this tail, pick up two 11's. One eight and two elevens. And skip these two eights and go into the eleven O. Oopsies. Love how my thread catches on that bead mat. Okay, two eleven O's, an eight O and two eleven O's. And you're going to go into the eleven O that you were first started in and pull. So this is what you should have now, is this pretty little kind of like squarish, triangleish. <laughs> if there's ever such a word. Now we're going to sew on our flower. At this point we're going to sew this on. So the first thing you're going to do is you make sure you're exiting in that first 11-0 and not in any of the new ones that you just put on. And then you're just going to run your needle through your flower, the bottom of it. You're going to go right directly across. You can see where the 11 O is right here. And you're just going to go through that 11 O like that. So you're right here over here. Jump across and go into the 11 O. And pull. Now, it kind of puts your button in place like so. See? Oops, let's get that in the camera. And then you're going to go through your button again, working from the bottom now. And pull. And go back through this. So I'm just going to keep going back and forth, reinforcing it through the 11 O's and the button only. So through the button. I don't know, go maybe three, four times, however much you feel like going. And through the button. Actually, I'm going to go this way now. It's going to kind of crisscross these. Through the button. And this will make it nice and tight and kind of push your beadwork over top of it like that. Just sit it over top. And one more. Time through the button. And now exiting through the eleveno here, the beginning. Right there. That's where you were working in. Like that. Now you're going to take your needle and work your way up to the top into that 8-0 and exit out of the 8-0. Okay, can you see that? Exit out of the 8-0 and pull. Now you're going to pick up two 11 O's, one 8 -0. Wait, sorry, two 11 O's, two 8 O's, and two 11 O's. Okay? So. 
two 11s, two 8s, and two 11s. And then you're just going to jump across now and go into the next 8-0 sticking up there. And you're going to have to keep pulling your thread nice and tight. Okay, it's going to funky, it's, it's going to curl up and go a little bit funky on you, but it will all go normal like this. It'll cup over your button like this when we're all finished. Okay, so don't panic. Don't push any panic buttons yet, and don't push that dislike button either. <laughs> Pick up two 11s, two 8s, and two 11s. Okay? Skip all these beads, all these 11 O's, and go into the next 8 O. Like that. <laughs> We're actually all sick in this house. Everyone makes me sick. Oops, did I say that out loud? Yeah. <laughs> <coughs> Sorry. Again, two 11s, two 8s, two 11s. Into the 8 O, like that. Two 11s, and two 8s, and two 11s. And now you're going to exit into the 11 -0. Oh, you started in right there. This will be the, the last group. Or sorry, what am I doing? Freak! I meant it's not 11 -0. you got to go into the last... <coughs> <coughs> Sorry, the last 8 0. <laughs> See what a cold does to you? It messes up your mind. But then it wouldn't be me if I didn't mess up my videos, right? But you all know I'm human and I make mistakes. Okay, so there we go. You've exited out of your 8 0. Now you're going to bring your needle and go through. The two 11 O's and one of the 8 O's to where you have two of them together. So exit between the 8 O's. And my thread snagged. There we go. Now I gotta pull all this nice and tight. Keep it nice and snuggy. Now you're going to pick up one 11 O. You're gonna exit through the 8 O and the two 11 O's. So you should be exiting right beside that 8 over there. Okay. Now you're going to pick up an 8 -0, and you're going to go through the two 11 O's and an 8 -0, and you're going to be exiting between the two 11 O's or 8 O's again. So do that. All right. Now this 8 should kind of be sitting on top. And it will be when you get your project finished. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry. Now pick up on 11 and go through the 8 and the 2 11 O's. And exit just before that 8 Okay, and then pick up an 8 and go through the two 11s and that 8 and exit between the two there and sit that bead kind of like on top of this other 8 it will end up there when it's finished pick up an 11 -0, go through the 8 and the two 11s and exit just before the 8 -0 there like that Now pick up an 11 and exit through the two 11s and the 8. Pull tight. Keep your work pulled tight. And pick up an 8 0. Exit through Oh sorry, not an 8 0. Pick up an 11 0. Gosh. 
and exit through the 8 and the 2 11s like that because we're putting an 11 between the two groups the two 8-0s so now you're going to pick up an 8 and exit right through to the top of that very first bead you put on so this is what you should have when you're all done it should look like that and now you'll start to see it on the other side of your button okay so now you're exiting out of your <coughs> your um, point here the 11 -0, that's between the two 8 -0s that you put that 11 -0 in okay I hope you can see that all right so now you're going to pick up and okay this is where it's going to be really confusing for you so I'll try to explain this so it ends up like this not messed up now you're exiting out of an 11 0 so when you're exiting out of an 11 0 in this particular round you're going to pick up an 8 that's going to be right beside that 11 0 so pick up an 8 and pick up three 11 0's right, and exit into that one that's sticking up see there's four of them sticking up so exit into that one so you have this now when you're exiting out of the 8 0 in this one you know you need to pick up three 11s and then the 8 0 because now you're going to go into the the 11 0 that's between the two 8s like that and you're going to pull okay <clears throat> and then you you know you're exiting out of an 11 so what do you pick up you pick up an 8 and three 11s and then you're going to go right into that next 8 0 that's sticking up there this component is so so easy to make All right now Continuing around, we're exiting out of an 8, so we need to pick up three 11s and one 8, and exit into the 11 0 like that. Okay. Now, alright, sometimes you have to just kind of get it to, to sit up like that perfectly, and it'll be fine. Now you're exiting out of the 11-0, um, so you need to pick up an 8 and you pick up three 11 -0s. And you're going to exit into that one sticking up. Like so. And pull. And I kind of just give these a little oomph in there so they have the little gap. See the gap in there? And that's what you want. Exiting out of an 8, pick up three 11 0s, one 8 0, and exit into the 11 0 that's between the two 8s of your previous round, like so. And pull. And I'm just trying to hold this so my fingers don't get in your face, in your way. Mm hmm. And that eight out doesn't want to sit nice. Like a good boy. Nope. Alright, now we're exiting out of the 11, so we're going to start with an 8 and three 11 0s. And we're going to exit into the 8 0. Like so. Okay. Pick Because we're exiting out of the 8, pick up three 11s. 1 8 and exit in your last 11 0, which would be the one you started from because you have your 8 0 already put on when you started your round and pull that round nice and tight. So now, what you're seeing here, you should have a gap in four places. There should be a gap, which we're going to fix up nicely. So the first thing you're doing is you're <clears throat> exiting out of that 11, so you're going to put your needle and go through all these beads 
until you go right directly down into the first group. So you're exiting out. Oh, see? So you're exiting out of this. So put you're, you're here. Go through all the beads, the eight, the three, the eight, the three, and the eight. Okay? Like so. Pick up an eight oh. Put it through, or put it in that gap. And then you're going to go through all these beads and exit across into the next one to fill in the gap. And we need to get into that 8 -oh. And this is going to kind of tighten it all up now. Again, pick up one 8 -oh. Go through. I'm just putting a we're just putting a bead into the where those gaps are. And you're gonna pull this nice and tight. Okay. An eight oh here. Oopsies, we have my thread just a little bit tingled. Oh goodness gracious. Okay, and pick up your last 8 -oh. and now in this last round here, put it through, you could just go around the outer beads <coughs> one extra time and that would definitely tighten this up nicely for you. So that's all I'm doing is I'm just going to go around all these outer beads one last time to give it a little bit of a reinforcement, not that you really need it, but a little extra thread never hurts. Okay, so I'm going through all these beads. So when you finish this, you can kind of see um, the diamond shape. You can tell basically where the side is and where the two points are. So you can kind of see that these ones stick out in more of a diamond shape as these ones are flush, kind of don't stick out much. So this one does. Sorry, I have it backwards. You can kind of see how it's diamond shaped. See? So you just made your first component. Now I've got five of them made and I really don't know because I didn't ever make this whole bracelet. I really don't know how many I'm going to need to make a bracelet. So I'm going to go off camera. I'm going to make one more because I still have this pink color. It's the light pink. <coughs> I've already got a dark pink one made, so I'm going to make the light pink one. So I have every flower color there is that I've got. And I'll come back and I'll show you how to join them like this. And you can pretty much tell the length that you're going to get when you get to about putting on your... I'm going to make six components. You can make five, you can make six, make whatever you want. Um, you can even just make this piece without the flower in it if you want but it's kind of boring so maybe flop a stick a pearl in there stick a crystal in there you can stick a bell you can do stick whatever you want in it stick a piece of gum in it <laughs> Just okay so I'm going off camera I'm gonna do one more component and then I'm going to come back and show you how to... Oh, wait. Hang on. I need to show you how to finish this. Jeepers Creepers. Now, you're just going to follow your thread path. So you're going to go work your way downwards into your beads, like so. See, I'm staying with... Oops. I'm staying with my thread path, but I'm getting closer to the center. And you want to get close to the center because that's where you're going to tie your, your piece off with this tail that you kept, right? So go down here, down here, and exit right there. So now I am already in line with this. And I'm going to tie a bunch of knots here. And I'm going to tie it surgeon's knots, which are twice around. So one, 
and then yeah, when my hands are so rough they look so disgusting and dirty unlike some of the ladies that do tutorials got such beautiful fingernails and hands and I have short fat ugly fingers and ugly nails but it's my job my job makes me have shitty hands it's my husband he makes me slave it's his fault why my hands are like this <laughs> All right, well, hey, it's my job. Nothing I can do about it. All right, so I tied about 550 knots. Kidding. <laughs> I tied three good knots, and now I'm gonna just weave my needle <clears throat> into these beads, and I'm going to tie half hitch knots just because I'm a knot person. I really like lots and lots of knots. All right, just because I, I'm scared that my project's gonna fall apart. And I'm gonna go through two more beads. I'm gonna tie another half hitch knot. This time I'm going to do it with um, uh, three times into this loop. So there's one, there's two, and it's only getting two because I pulled it too tight. So, say la vie. Anyway, that's good enough. You can just go and weave through some beads now. Which, I'll just keep going around and go up. And through here, through here, and through here. And just stay in your thread path. You know, even beginners can make this. And even if you went out of your thread path, I don't really no, anybody's going to see it as long as you have something on top like this to hide it. Okay? There's a secret to a beater's madness. Now, we're going to burn these ends off with my trusty old thread zapper. And right here. Um, hang on. I'm going to get something and I'm going to come right back. So I'll be right back. Hey everyone, look at this is Miku. Say hello. Say hi. This is a Scarlet Macaw. This is baby Miku. This is the one chirping in the background. Step up. Constantly step up. Miku here. Want this? Hello. 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 Say hello. 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 He wants my. <laughs> Hello. 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 No, you can say it. Nice. Step up. No, 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 no. No computer. <laughs> You're bad. Hey. Hey, baby Miku. Hey. Want this? Hello. 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 Hello! Your kisses. Oh, thank you. But you can have this one. Here you go, you got a button. Yum! Now you're gonna crunch on that. Step up. Step up. Cool boy, baby Miku. Anyway, I just wanted you guys to see the macaw that you're always hearing in the background. And he just thinks he owns everything around here, including the computer. So I'll be back after I do my last component. No, no! Okay, so I've got my six components made, like these. And I think this is like a really inexpensive um, bracelet to make. And for those of you that can't always get beads that I use, you can always put a pearl or something in here and still call it flowers in a basket. It doesn't have to particularly be these flowers. So. I'm going to show you how to sew it together like this. So I'm not even sure how long it's going to be, but <clears throat> let's just play along together here, beat along, and we'll see um, what we come up with. So what you're first going to do is determine the order of the color that you're going to do. So I'm going to do a pink, and then I'll do orange, um, and then I'll do 
uh, green and then I'll do a blue and the yellow and then again the dark pink so I'm not putting any of my colors together here now you're gonna pick up one of them and you're gonna make sure that you have the a diamond shaped facing the right way this way like that and I've got a about a yard and a half of thread on here I don't know if that's going to be enough but we'll see first thing you're going to do is you're going to tie a knot so go through um, any hole or any section here like that just go through it go between some beads here and we're just going to tie our thread on and then we'll work this tail in later so leave enough tail that you can get your needle on and uh, run it through so I'm going to tie a couple of surgeon's knots and I'm going to tie it, tie it right beside that 8 -0. so I don't know if you can see I'm tying it right beside the 8 -0. so when I pull my knot inside it'll go inside the 8 -0, like that nice and tight <clears throat> again one two wraps in between the 8 -0. and I'm going to do it a third time one two and heck I'm going to wrap it three times just for good measure Now, I tied it way down here. This is the the way my, my thing is going to go, my bracelet's going to go. So these are the, where I'm going to join. And let me see, get this here. My thread is way over here, so I'm just going to work my way until I'm coming out of the third bead here. Sorry, this bead. See the middle bead here on the side? <coughs> Bless you. That's where I want to be. So, take your needle, pull it through all these beads, and pull your knot inside so it's good and hidden. And pull. So now we're exiting out of this middle group of three here. Now you're going to pick up two 11 O's like this. Two 11 O's and you're going to get your next color and my thread is exiting on this side of the bead so I want to go in on this side as well in the middle bead of the next component hope you can see that and we're going to pull that alright now you're going to pick up two more elevens and you're going to exit through here again as well where you started and you're going to pull and that's joint now you're just going to go around these and reinforce this so that's all I'm going to do right now I mean, I've got to pick it up because I'm finding it too hard to do that way so I'm just going to go around and quickly reinforce this a few times I got tangled up here. God, my thread stinks on this mat all the time. Sometimes it flips my beads right off the mat. So keeping this pulled tight, I'm going to do it oh, three times. Pulling nice and tight, and 
this is my last time so there's three times nice and snug okay so this is good and joined right here now as you can see I've added beads here beads here and beads here so I have like three rows and it kind of puffs up and that's what you want because it looks really really unique like that so now you need to exit out of the next 80 beside the center one so out of this one in that direction like so and you're going to pick up an 11 -0, an 8 -0, an 11 -0. And let me just move these components out of my way here. And you're just going to go across into that, the next, cross all three of those beads. So I'm exiting here, picked up my 11, my 8, and my 11. And we're going to go like this, pulling tight. Again, pick up an 11, an 8, an 11, and go down into the next group of three. So now we've got to reinforce this. And we only need to go around this probably two times. So pull it nice and tight, and you can feel it kind of bunching up already. See? So I'm just going to go through these three beads on the side, these three beads here, pulling tight, these three beads, and these three beads. And you can go another time if you want, but I'm just going to stick with two times for now. Now you want to take your needle and go up a few levels because we want to put this last group in. So move your needle up these three beads on the side here and exit just before the eight hole on the side there. So I hope you can see that. Okay. And pull. Now here we're going to add two 11 O's, an eight O, and two 11 O's. And you're going to go right across and go down beside the three beads. See the three on the other side, beside the eight. Go down that. And pull. And then go across into these three beads. Let me turn my work around. And then up through these three beads here. So you're exiting in the same spot only mirrored image reversed. Okay, now pick up two 11s, an 8, and two 11s. And you're going to skip across, go down into these three beads. It's not easy because it's kind of tight here. There we go. And go ahead and reinforce it. I would. All right? So I'm going to go back through all these beads. And I'm going to reinforce it once. All right. Down through all five of these. And seeing that this is an outer edge, be an edge row, so you might want to, oh my god, this is frustrating me when I get it snagged so many times. Alright, and in here, pull nice and tight, so when you sit your bracelet down, this is ovaled, it's beveled, see it? See how pretty that looks? I love it. Kind of like a flower garden. 
and I don't like how loose it is so I'm just going to keep doing this until I'm happy with it all right and that's good and snug in there snug like a book and that's it now let's move on and show you how to sew this this button on because this is going to be one end here so let's get our needle all the way over to the other side so just follow all your beads around to the other side like so keeping it nice and snug here because you don't want this to loosen up you want that to stay puffed up it's puffed alright now I would suggest maybe going to pick up let's see one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fifteen so we have two let me see two six eight ten twelve fourteen fifteen and one eight-o, and the reason we're going to pick up an eight-o is because my hole, the eleven o's, will go right through that. So we don't want that to happen, right? And I kind of, I don't like how long that is, <laughs> so I'm going to shorten it. Sorry, I just don't like it. So I'm kind of just designing this bracelet as we go. <laughs> So at least the class closure anyways. So I'm going to take off about two, four, six, seven, eleven, seven, eleven o's. I don't like these big long tailed bracelets. So pick back up your 8 and let's see. We want this side, so we want to go this way. Right? Now you're going to pick up another 8 because we've gone through our button here up another 8 -oh. and now we have two four six eight pick up eight wait no just go back down through these down through two four five six and pull that and pick up two beats two eleven o's and you're exiting this way on this side so you're going to come around and exit that way to join your clasp see like so huh i probably could have gotten away with putting some uh, some 11 O's in here just because I'd be afraid this here would wear and tear and end up breaking so let's just pull this out or don't do it at all don't listen to me you wouldn't have to pull your work out if you didn't listen to me alright let's try this again um, simply because I'm not using wire protectors, so you know me and my wire protectors, right? Let's take those off. Let's go back up through these six beads and back up through the 8 -oh and pull that off. And let's put hmm, one, two, three. Let's see if three is going to fit in there. No, let's put five, four, five. Let's see if five fits in there. All right, now pick up this and go down through these six beads here in the line. And then pick up two more. And then exit through your dado here. And pull this. That's a little better. Yes, because now this kind of looks like a flower stem, right? And it's not going to get wear and tear. 
So of course, you know the golden rule, we enforce, we enforce, we enforce. Let's go back up in here and through here, through all these beads again, pulling tight, through all the beads in here, inside the button, here, pulling tight. And down through the six. And down through the two that didn't get it. And pull your work tight. And in the eight of and this tail will get, get the heck out of my way. In there. So there's your button sewn on for your closure. And I think it's kind of stuck there. There we go. Yep. Isn't that cute as a button? <laughs> um, I'm going to reinforce this one more time. Hopefully I can get my needle through all these beads again. Well, where the six is, is where I'm afraid I might not because it was starting to get really tight in here and it already is really tight so yeah might not be able to do it that many times through there through those three down through these two It's as snug as a bug in a rug. Oh boy. Yeah. Very carefully I'm going to do this. Alright, so that's pushing my lock. And which one of these got? Two, three. So I'm going to need to go down these two and pull. And through here. Now just work your way all around the outside to get over to here on this side so we can add another component now. Now that your closure is secure, your button is secure on there. See? It's secure. It's not going anywhere. And So now go along here. I'm going to go off camera and I'm going to finish attaching all the rest of these pieces and then I'll come back and I'll show you what to do after we've completed doing all of these, adding all the rest of these components. Okay, I'll be back. Okay, I'm all done this. Um, sewing this bracelet together like this so now all we need to do is add the piece here so we can do our our um, bracelet up this turned out really pretty it's kind of colorful very summery if you're wearing a yellow shirt this would be nice a blue and an orange a pink this would go with anything, even a green shirt. So I tried this on my wrist and <laughs> doesn't fit. So I'm going to have to make the closure long enough that it clips onto the button. So it's about this much too short. Oops. See it on here? Let me pull this up so you can see. I'm going to have to do it up. I'm going to have to make it long enough that it fits. So, it's going to take a few seed beads. So I better put a few more seed beads out on my mat here. And 
Now I'm just going to start picking up beads until I think this is going to be long enough to fit my wrist. So I like to just put my seed beads all on um, my needle like this. Let me show you. Go like this. Make a big pile and just go like this. And it picks up your beads. Instead of trying to pick each one up. That'll take forever. So I just keep making piles and going like this. See? It works. Especially if you have to put a large amount of beads on there. So this is starting to look pretty good. <laughs> I'm just still going to add more because it's definitely not going to fit around my wrist. <laughs> So all I'm going to do is run my needle through that bead here and then I'm going to try my bracelet on holding this really snug and tight. So let me see if this is going to, oops, it's going to do up. Kind of hard, but I know it'll fit. This pretty much looks like it'll fit me. But I don't want to do it too big, because if I do it too big, then this piece here will... Whoops. No, don't pull off my thread off my needle. I hate that. Okay. Um, let me just hold this in my hand. Pulling this tight. See if I can get this to do up. I really did this the hard way but yeah that's that's perfect because now I'm not going to lose it here so I'm going to tie this off now and that's easy to do because all we're going to do is the golden rule reinforce reinforce so we're just going to go around and around this loop making sure it's uh, secure in place so through all these okay why do I have to do everything the hard way really I don't know what I'm doing just faking it <laughs> just faking it I don't know what I'm doing here just running through all of these beats and this will be number two, so you can go through them all one more time because I strongly encourage people to reinforce three times. If you can get through four times, hey, go for it. It's never going to hurt anything to go through your projects. So here's, uh, here's the third time. It's a charm. That's what they say about marriage. Third time's a charm. <laughs> so. Well, my thread will be long enough for me to tie it off, I think. Perfect. And we're almost there. Now, I'm really not sure how you would turn these into earrings, but I am going to play with that. And a ring. I think a nice summer ring would be really pretty to go with this bracelet. 
and all you would really do is use one component for a ring or for the earrings but you would have to kind of dress it up a little more so there let's tie this off tie about 35 knots we should be good I'm just kidding I'm just going to tie a few here <clears throat> and I like to go through the 8-0's because it's I can go through the thread once twice and three times and pull tight so that's all I'm doing Once, twice, and I think I'm going to just tie one more for good luck just because this is, this end here is going to get played around with a lot so we want this good and secured. I can't really do it there so. So once, twice, three times, pull, ta-da. All right, so I'm just going to run through a few beats here. And a few more. And I'm going to burn it off. Carefully. And there we have flowers in a basket bracelet. Is that not the cutest thing ever? Look at how pretty. It's kind of a fun summery bracelet. Anyways, I got to go post some more pictures for the last day of the, the final hours, actually, of the contest. Like I said, everyone has done an amazing job, and it's going to be super hard to find the winner. And there will be two runner-ups, so I'm going to, I posted on the uh, bead page um, what I'm giving away for that. Anyways, I'm going to go get that done, get this video edited, and I'm going to get it uploaded. So, take care everyone. Good luck. See you soon on the next video. Bye-bye.